Uh, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. I just had a brain fart because I was thinking, why am I doing an introduction? Because this is a separate interview. This is not part of my recap videos that I'm putting together each day. Um, I got the sweet hat. You know, he's got a cool hat. I'll let him talk about that. Um, <laughs> anyway, I've got John Rivenberg here. Um, we've sat down uh, a few years ago here at the Hill Country Winery Symposium. Um, so we're going to reconnect, get some uh, cool things that was happening since then. Uh, he's, if you don't know who he is, and I don't know why you wouldn't, because you should have watched the first interview. Um, he is somebody that's uh, been in the industry for quite a while and an amazing resource of things. So, John, give us a uh, reintroduce yourself and let's just uh, see what's been happening. Awesome. Well, thanks, Mark, yeah. for taking the time. Uh, I'm John Rivenberg. I am a 17-year uh, veteran of the Texas wine industry at this point. Mm -hmm. I've lived and survived through most all the challenges, ups, ups and downs and hills and valleys, and mostly all the successes that we've had in Texas wine. You know, there's a... There's an awful lot of people that love to talk about um, disparaging things that are going on or bad weather or, you know, the economy. But uh, I'd like to start off this article or I'll start off this interview with, uh, you know, just just positivity. Mm -hmm. we, we have amazing things happening in Texas wine. We're winning awards hand over fist. Mm -hmm. We're making wines and our wine quality has gone through the roof. We've got growers that are doing absolutely amazing things in their vineyards. And um, we need to be we need to be highlighting more of those things and, and talking more about those things um, as a as a funny little segue into that. Uh, I am the incoming president for Texas Wine Growers. OK, Texas Wine Growers is an organization that was started by some colleagues of mine uh, a few years ago. It's all based around um, authenticity. 100% Texas. And the mission is built in to bring awareness of uh, sense of place to war. Uh, and all things Texas wine. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on some great education components to what we're doing. We are the leaders in the advancements of AVAs in the state. So all these new AVAs everybody's been hearing yeah, about. I, it's you, our, it's yeah. our organization. Uh, I don't even remember been, what they are, so I want to tell me yeah. who they, who they're going to be. That's okay. <laughs> I'll probably drop the ball on that. I mean, but we've got, we've got some great AVA things going on. Um, we've got a, a, a new advocate program, which is really, really cool. You can go to our website, uh, Texas Wine Growers, um, and uh, we've got an advocate program that allows people to um, to sign up to be an advocate for Texas wine. You get access to uh, you get inside access to our newsletter that's internal. Mm -hmm. You get um, access to uh, events and um, you know information that are not public from all of our member wineries, okay. right? Uh, we've got some bennies in the fact that you get invited to parties before anybody else does. Whether uh, yeah, yeah. It's, whether it's wine club parties or different events that Texas wine growers mm -hmm. might be doing. Um, and the coolest thing right now is uh, Kelsey Kramer at um, uh, with her her Texas wine ambassador class is offered a uh, a fifty dollar um, rebate, if you will, or discount on her class if you sign up for uh, an advocate member. So if you sign up for an advocate member, you get a discount on the class, which is yeah. really cool. Um, we also have uh, some sponsor members, uh, industry advocate members that we're trying to to build as well. And so um, that organization is is growing and, and doing some cool things. Cool. Um, as far as me, man, we've had, my goodness, we've just had so much going on. Um you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus in on the positive. You know, running and operating a business, there's always things that are that you could you could dwell on the negatives all day long. But uh, from the positive standpoint, um, uh, we are we are redefining our brand. Right, Rivenberg Wine is uh, kind of our parent brand. Rivenberg Wine owns Kerbal Hills Winery. Mm -hmm. um, Kerbal Hills Winery has moved into uh, working on a program with Shriner University in Kerbal, okay. Texas. 
um, which is a great university, private school. Um, the the executive board and their board of directors are all fantastic people. They've got amazing vision for the youth of the Hill Country, which uh, our family was just uh, enthralled with. Um, so we started a viticulture certificate program that will launch in March, okay. uh, March 2024. The program is geared towards vineyard labor. We're not trying to – uh, we're not trying to educate owners or high-level managers. We want to educate the day-to-day operators in your team. So like a trade school type like of thing? Like a trade school. Yeah, yeah that's exactly perfect. what it is. So we're we're on the foundation, foundational uh, bottom rung of getting this started. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. We've been working on it for two years. Uh, right. But we're going to get that kicked into gear uh, here in the spring. Uh, and along with that, we opened up the Kerbal Hills Winery tasting room on the campus uh right next to our vineyard it's a uh uh, an old historic home that was built in 1905 it's absolutely gorgeous and so along with that we're gonna hopefully and i don't want to get too far out ahead of myself but the goal and our hopes are that we can start to also train some tasting room staff and hospitality staff in that space as well um so that's the fun part um say that's kind of the pedestrian upfront part of the world One of the coolest parts that are happening is we're now taking the wine incubator and we're going to make it, uh, we're going to make it all things wine nerd, right? All right. My brand, Rivenberg Wine, will be featured there along with Nobleman Wine. uh, And uh, our production winemaker, Meredith Reed, has a Mm -hmm. wine called uh, Meredith Margaret. It's absolutely fire. Her wines are so good and she's going to be releasing those there. Um, but I guess the biggest news that's outside of all the things, I know that was a lot just now. Uh, we, uh, with some partners, were able to obtain Hill Country Distillers. So we are going to be moving the distillery up to the winery incubator. So the incubator will be now incubating distillation products along with our Hill Country Spirits brand. Okay. Um, and we will be Texas's first 100% authentic Texas product uh, alcohol business. So, so all of our wines are 100% yeah. Texas, and all of our spirits are 100% Texas because we we ferment with uh, cactus pad. So we're making we're, okay. So cactus is harvested at different ranches all over the state, uh, and then we've also got a brandy line that we'll be launching pretty soon. That's all vineyard designate brandies from Texas Texas vineyards of dis- distinction. So all right, it, it's a lot. And we, yeah. it, but this is all kind of the combination of several years kind of coming together right here at the end of 2023 and the beginning of 24. So, all right. So yeah, you're not going to be, you know, pumping out handcrafted vodka um, no. by, by the millions <laughs> from like, you know, we no. buy from, stuff, from, 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 from a whole lot from, of that <laughs> from grains in the middle of the country. Right? Yes, no, no, we are not. <laughs> no, no, no. All of our products, uh, even down to in our gins, the, the, the oranges and limes that we use and the juniper berries are all Texas. Nice. Everything. Like, so we're, yeah. you know, uh, I guess maybe not the sugar. If we can, if we can find a sugar beet, farmer here somewhere we might but that's about the only thing we've got some sugar in our in our dulce coffee product that's not you know what i mean I, I i think i think you're okay with that <laughs> We're the, the important ingredients yes are all are all texas that's cool that's yeah. really cool so what so so you mentioned a gin like do you have like an idea of the line of uh spirits you're going to be doing so we already we already are so the company uh was hill country formerly hill country distillers mm-hmm. out of comfort texas and they've already been making fantastic products for eight years. Okay. So we're not really tweaking any recipe okay. um, or process. Um, so we're making a, a clear cactus spirit, which is, I would say it's somewhere, you know, between a tequila or a uh, mezcal that's not smoky, right? Okay. Still got that great vegetal nature, but it's very clean, very crisp and refreshing. Okay. Um, then we're making a jalapeno product that is it is a fermented jalapeno but okay <laughs> um, really good we're you know that is a that is a product that we are we're um, pushing for the folks that love a uh, spicy margarita okay. or a bloody mary it makes absolutely fantastic bloody marys and a little bit goes a long way so it's right. nice um 
we have our uh, gin, which we were just talking about, mm-hmm. and then we have a uh, a coffee dulce, which is a uh, you know like a coffee li- liqueur, if you okay, will. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, those are our core products right now, and then very soon we'll be launching the the brandy. Okay. So 100 percent Texas brandy made from Texas grapes. Aged cool. our oldest one and first release will probably be a seven year old brandy. Oh wow! Yeah, it's cool, man. I'm telling you, like it's right. it, this is some nerdy stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. So see if I if I get my cognac armagnac, uh, that is not, not is that going to be an no? Is that not, that's how I think XO? I think it's ten years. So I guess we're on V. That would be a VSOP because five to seven, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Armagnac and and. And cognac, cover, they kind of diverge a little bit on their aging, but right. five to seven, I believe, is VSOP. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I can't wait to try some of this stuff. We'll get you some. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you some. So a um, little side note. So we had we had a bunch of wines here a couple nights ago. And uh, and I, mean, I think was it? No, it was a couple nights ago. And uh, he's got a he's got a Tanat, which he's he's kind of king Tanat, honestly, in, in the state. Um, so there was, wasn't much left in the bottle, but they were like, take some wine home. So he was one of he was one of three wines. I was like, I'm taking this back to the hotel. Oh, I didn't finish it yet. That's a good call. But I'm gonna take it home. Um, along with one of Bel- Ben Calais wines. Um, oh. and then I had a Bingham Trebbiano with the Whataburger oh. uh, spicy. Stuff. If it's not a that, sweet wine by any means, but no, but the that's flavor good, profile. Oh, it's so cool, man. So good. <laughs> we had a, we actually Kelly and I drank a bottle of Vermentino the other night from 2019 from from yeah. the Binghams that was just yeah spectacular. Yeah. No, I, I crushed I crushed that I crushed the Trebbiano bottle, but I'm and I I finished uh, Ben's bottle last night, so I have I have yours to take home plus another one that I had I actually got from a restaurant. Um, so I'm taking those rest. I'll finish those tonight. Probably nice, man. Well, that's not, <laughs> it takes about two days for that not to really open up anyway. Well, yeah. So. I mean, it was, it's about a half a bottle ish. And I did, I did put the cork back in. I threw it in the, in the fridge at the hotel mm-hmm. just to preserve. I don't want to get something too oxidized, especially it's got a lot of headspace. Um, but I'm interested in, you know, trying some more of that but yeah so yes i want to let you know i'm taking some of your wine home <laughs> Thanks, man. That's, a, that's an honor dude i, lo- I love that that's yeah. great um so with uh so with the incubator i were you talking about um it may i may i may not have heard it right but I, in one of the sessions that we were both in did you say something about that you might be even trying to do as a going to custom crush not just being an incubator we are or, i think this year um, uh, you know, given the foresights I have been blessed with, with yeah. being kind of an industry insider, I think there's going to be a little bit more need for some custom crush this year. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that we, um, we have a lot of tank space. Okay. Um, uh, we've got a lot of operating space and we have a phenomenal team. And in the past, I haven't really ever wanted to take on custom crush just because it's not our model. Yeah. The yeah. incubator. Um, but we've got a great team. We've got some space, um, and I think that there's going to be a lot of farmers that are going to need it in okay. this coming harvest. So it, it, for our viewers who may not know what the difference between an incubator and a crust and crusher, can you explain what that yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, so the, the, I mean, the wine incubator is more built around – um, being a partnership in a – being a member in a co-op operation where you are essentially um, – you are paying an operational fee to be part of uh, a winemaking team, a viticulture team, a sales and marketing team, uh, and then have full access and use of our um, of our uh, eighteen thousand square foot winemaking facility with all mm-hmm. the equipment we have and you know all all of those things along with and what I I mean I, I may be a little biased to this but I think is a very high valued thing is my. Uh, my industry network, right? So when you're at the incubator, you're essentially, you're John Ravenberg also, right? So anybody that calls up from the incubator are automatically has a pretty good in okay. in relationship to, you know, suppliers, uh, growers, logistics people, you know, what, what have you, right? It, mm-hmm. uh, I think it brings a little higher cachet and I've got, I've got a very good, uh, telephone book full of contacts yeah right so that's that's helpful cool. also and then the eventual goal is that these people will go out on their own yeah absolutely okay. i mean like you know i mean the you know the ambassadors of the world they were they were incubator members for a very long time mm-hmm. and they're you, you never really leave the incubator right you become alumni okay uh, yeah 
And so I, I love that, right? Like I've built just a, a cool network of friends. You know, they start out, they start out as clients, mm -hmm. they become friends, then they, they, they become friends and peers, right? And then they become colleagues and then they're out operating in the world. And it's fantastic to watch them like excel and succeed. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the goal, right? Some of them it's, three years, some of it's six years. Um, we have some folks that want to kind of create a hybrid around what they do, where they want to, they don't necessarily want to build their own facility, but they want to operate out of ours, like a, like a AP. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're working, we're working towards those relationships also, but it's, uh, it's kind of always evolving, but okay. the goal is to, is to train, start up, teach, prop up, and then have people be moving out into the world, right? Okay. Um, yeah. And then with a custom crush, is that more, not not necessarily I'm going to go, hey, John, I want this wine, make it for me. I know that custom crush can do that, but if, you know, if I don't, I don't, want to get into is yeah, so, to this like have all the headaches all the headaches yeah. right yeah so our custom crush is going to be geared and i should have expounded on this a little bit more our custom crush is going to be more geared to the already operating winery okay right? yeah I, I so figured, there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of wineries that they have their programs they have their profiles they have their vineyards um but let's just say X, XYZ Winery is doing 5,000 cases and they want to do 10,000 cases, but they don't have the money or they don't have the desire or energy to invest another $3 million in a new facility to help that expansion. Well, they can spend a fraction of that with us mm -hmm. as a as a custom crush client or, or um, you know, expander, if you will, in right, the, yeah. the process. So our goal is not to get the guy who... Uh, and, and I'm just going to be frank, right? Like our goal is not to get the guy in Waco and I'm just choosing Waco. I don't even know. Like anyway, <laughs> in, in whatever city it is, Texas, right. Yeah. That says, Oh, I want to have a, I want to have, I want to have a tasting barrels. room and two barrels. And yeah. can you make four tons for me? Like, I mean, it would be the most expensive wine they ever they yeah, got. Right. right. Because we're just not, that's, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to be the, the one ton, two ton, three ton, you know, we want to take operations that are already existing and we want to give them an avenue to expand without massive capitalization. Right. That's our goal. Yeah. yeah. Or like, if you say you have like just more fruit than you thought was going to come yeah, in. Of course. You yeah. just need to see that just that, that one year, you see some extra capacity, we want to be right? The we want to be the place that the, that the, that the existing professional operations know they can call and say, this fruit is coming. Here's our protocol. Do it exactly like this protocol calls for. Mm -hmm. We don't need you to be stylistic or, you know, inspirational. We just need, we need a good chef, right? Yeah. And your team has proven itself to be good chefs. Um, and uh, here, knock it out. And then we'll come pick it up in January. Cool. Right? That's, that's the goal. I mean, and that's truly what Custom Crush is everywhere else I've ever worked. And it's... You know, it's the ability to expand your footprint without expanding your capital investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. and that, that that topic came up several times uh, in things that that they they were calling it custom crush, and, in, and up until really this this symposium, in my head, custom crush was you know somebody is not really in the industry, but they want to get into it, or they want to they want maybe more than a barrel or well, two, but they want they want to they want a limited thing, and yep. they're you yep. know they're going to do a thousand cases or something like that, and 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 that, and that is yeah, a, that is what it is more of a vanity wine yes, type of thing, that, yeah, and that is what it is, that is what it is a lot and has become in Texas, um, but everywhere everywhere else. The vast majority of custom crush is a legitimate avenue to offset capital. Yeah. I, I mean, it really is. I mean, that's how I got involved with custom crush. We were making wines and I was like, well, if we're making wines down in Paso, why would we truck them all the way back up to our winery? Yeah. When we have a facility with a capable, you know, operating team that can, here's my protocol, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think it's funny here. There's so many people that are worried that somebody's going to steal their protocol. I always laugh. I had somebody ask the other day, "Well, will, will, will my protocol be safe?" And I'm like, "Well, I mean, I wrote a whole lot of protocols that like have circled back around that other people are the now their protocols. You know, yeah. like I wouldn't worry about it. I, I'm a professional. Like, yeah, we don't we don't care what your protocol is. We just want to help. So speaking about like trucking, you know, trucking grapes all over the place. So since the vast majority of our grapes are coming from the high plains. Uh, I imagine there are other custom crush operations out there. Or yeah, there's is... a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I mean, the guys, the, there's some, 
there's some guys that are really putting some cool ones in. I mean, Form Forge is going to be a, a, a state of the art facility, from mm-hmm. what I understand. And those guys are those are good people. Um, we buy some grapes from them, and they they grow great grapes, and they're standing up a really uh, great operation. Um, I think you know uh, what Frank Garza is going to be doing with Tailored Three Eighty Five. Those guys have been. I mean, Frank's been around forever, right? He's okay. been doing it for a while. Um, I don't know much uh, otherwise about some of the other like you know true the, you know the custom crush businesses right yeah um there's everybody that does a little bit of it on the side right everybody has wineries that they help out and they do a little bit on the side but those are the only two that i know in the high plains that are going right. to be well i know of others but those are the only two that i know they're operating you know they're operating staff right. and team and not well enough to say that i think they're going to do a good job um so but, is it easier to crush is it easier to transport transport the juice um, as far as like keeping the juice from, you know, basically, if you're just transporting the grapes, bad things can happen in that eight, 12 hour you versus know, like the, the, the juice itself yeah, or, or it, what? It can, but I think the misnomers that's been created around like uh, are, and I, I love my academic community. Don't take this the wrong <laughs> way. You guys have helped us a lot, but right. In reality we move a lot of fruit around without any issue and it's uh it's been fine for years right yeah, yeah. you just got to know how to work with your with your person okay right cool um and I, i'd be i would be remiss if i didn't give my my good friend uh if i didn't give my good friend um <laughs> Uh, Philip Gore, a plug okay. for Gore Cold Storage. That guy's moved more grapes than uh, than just about anybody, right? Okay. And unless you're a big enough operation like William Chris to get your own trucks, um, it's a good it's a good tool to have, right? So cold storage is that like it gets harvested, goes into a cold storage until it gets trucked. Is that? Um, like, it can. He's got yeah. cold stores that it can stage and get on a truck and get out, right? Okay. He also can get it on a truck and get it straight down. Uh, he's got cold storage both in the High Plains in Brownfield, Texas, along okay. with cold storage in Stonewall. Okay. And then he's got trucks going back and forth in between there all the time. Okay. So um, he is uh, he is a great, great person cool. to know, right? Yeah. Um, I couldn't I, – I teach people logistics all the time, and they're amazed with how important it is in comparison to what we do. Right, exactly. Um, how are we doing? We're doing okay. We have a 2.30 coming up. Uh, is there anything about the, and, and I do want to go to this one, um, the, as far as the symposium itself, is there anything, any like one thing that you uh, were excited about this year? Um, oh. Type yeah, of thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, this is the 10th anniversary. Uh, yes. This is pretty special for me uh, because uh, myself, January Weiss, and Chris Brunderett founded this symposium. Yes, I, uh, I expect January. Where she's going to tell the story, but you can tell your you want to tell your version of the she story. She told it earlier. Yeah, um, well, I'm getting we on were, camera. We were, sit, we, we were, were going to we sit were, down a little we bit. Were, we were sitting at a table <laughs> at uh, another conference that you that is held still today, mm-hmm. and uh, we simply I'll give you the Reader Digest version. Said, you know, I think we could do this too, and I think we should do this focused around the Hill Country, and uh, and so. Before you knew it, we'd already been doing some grower tailgates. We'd already been doing a little bit of like education stuff and wine. And before you know it, uh, Chris, myself, in January, and and oh, let's be honest, mostly January, <laughs> had uh, put together the first symposium. And we we uh, had it at the Hill Country uh, uh, Academic Center at Texas Tech there in in Fredericksburg. And uh, you know, I'll never forget January coming up to me and going, "We need more chairs. We need more chairs." And I was like, "What for? What?" She's like, "We we're like fifty people over what we're supposed to be," and so like at that event, we started planning being here at Horseshoe Bay. Yeah, and we've been here ever since. And I and those that know me, I'm a huge traditionalist. Like I love traditions. Like and and we in Texas need some traditions mm-hmm. that are. They're in the same place. You know where you're staying. You know what you're doing, right? You know you're going to see the friends that you want to see all year long, but you're too damn busy to actually get mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah. You know you're going to see them there. Right. And it's important, right? And so I'm super excited for the for the uh, 10th anniversary of the symposium and as well as the – I like your hat. Yeah, 25th, I got to represent. The 25th anniversary of the organization. Uh, it's 
it's hard for me to believe that it's that this organization has been here 25 years and I've been doing this 17 years uh, like professionally. There's probably a few years that that I was dabbling into it that I, I don't really count because I was just like that. I was that kid sticking my nose in, seeing, right, what, yeah. you know, seeing what was going on. But um, yeah, yeah, those are. That's probably what I'm most excited about. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it's, and just the attendance is is what been well attended. We've mm-hmm. had uh, our board has done a fantastic job putting it together. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just always so prof- so well run and professionally put together. That's right. Just it just feels good. I mean, as an attendee, I mean, I'm I'm on the press side, so I see. I see pretty much the same thing every everybody else sees, but I view it through maybe a different lens. Um, I'm grateful that it is in the same place every time. It's around the same time. This year was a little bit different than normal, but it's still in this time of year. Yep. So we'll be going back to early yeah. January. So usually in January, I, 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 I'm going to tell Jerry, I say, you have it in January because it's your name, isn't it? So, <laughs> um, but, um, uh, but yeah, having it in, in around this time of year, I think is is great. Well, it's great for all of you because this is one of the slowest parts of the year. You don't have a ton going on. You can break away for a few days, you know. Um, but I like that I know where I'm going to be every time. Um, and yeah, there's there is that kind of stability. Um, whereas, and this is nothing to say anything bad about that other conference, but they they flip between two cities every every year, and that's fine because you've yeah they're trying to accommodate the people that come back, especially, I mean, especially the North Texas people. Like yeah. you know, they don't necessarily want to be driving down to San Marcos, you know, and and yeah. and it's at the same time, you know, yeah. So I get that, but at the same time, it's kind of like if it's in the one city every year, um, I think that's that's a great uh, a great thing because it's easier to plan. Um, and I mean, you get familiar with the facility yeah. as an attendee and as a presenter and as an organizer, you know, you know, the layout. So that's, that was my experience, like a tech som all those years at, at, at the four seasons, like you get to know where everything is. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I remember all the names of the other rooms, but tech som, but eventually you, you learn it. Well, when you're a volunteer, you learn all yeah. those names. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've been excited about this. I, there's actually, I've actually attended probably more seminars than I normally do. I got to geek out a lot about things. I'll talk about that in my own little piece. But uh, it was a, uh, it's been a fun, it's been a fun year, and I'm glad I came. I almost didn't because of my studies, but I'm like, I can, I can make it work. Well, we're glad so, you're yeah. here, man. And I, I'm, I'm apologizing. I saw your watch. I saw yeah, what time we, we it gotta is. go. I actually need like two minutes to prep because I'm actually introducing the next session. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up, <laughs> John. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, as always. Uh, Uh, Make sure you like and subscribe and tell your friends about it, and we'll see you next time.